Ladies and gentlemen, gather around for a little history lesson about the origin of idols. You know, those shiny little trinkets and statues that people worship and pray to? Well, let's just say they're not exactly what they seem. In fact, the word idol is just another word for poop god. That's right, you heard me correctly, folks. These so-called gods are nothing but a bunch of... Well, let's just say you wouldn't want to invite these gods over for dinner. And before you get all holier than thou and start talking about the God of the Bible, let's not forget that El and Yahweh were also once idols. So the next time you see someone bowing down to a statue, just remember, they're worshiping a pile of, well, you get the gist. Idols are technically a derogatory term for other gods, which is better understood, and you do not beat around the bush, sh gods. So you mind telling us what a sh god is and what the yeah. language is? And uh, I want everyone to please get the book. I cannot brag enough about it. So please tell us what a sh god is, or better yet, an idol. So we get the word idol from the Greek Bible. Um, so in other words, the ancient Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures. And um, that's that's where this and quite often the Greek term idol translates, particularly translates a Hebrew word, um, gilulim, which is a plural term, which basically is best translated as gods. It comes from a word that means um, that's used of dung, um, a kind of rolled up, you know, like balls of dung, rolled up poo, basically. Um, and it's a term that we particularly find in the book of Ezekiel and other kind of priestly type literature. Um, and it's a way, again, of debasing um, cult statues of deities. So Yahweh probably had his own cult statues within certain um, worshipping communities. You know, obviously we have the prohibition on images in Deuteronomy and Exodus, which you know, you don't tell people not to do something unless they're doing it. So the term gilalim is used as a deliberate way of of really talking down. You know, it's talking, basically. Um, it's really talking down the cult statues of other deities. Because don't forget, cult statues were understood to be the deity. They weren't just a representation or a symbol. They were understood to, to be, to manifest the deity. Um I so love, yeah, that's I love where that term story comes from. About Baal, where you, you but I used this recently because this is my new Bible. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, remember when Elijah is talking to the Baal, the, the priest of Baal, yeah. and he says, uh, you know, where is your God? Did he go? And is he defecating now? Yeah, he's basically said, why is your why is your God not answering you? What what your prayers? You know, maybe he's busy. Maybe he's on journey. Maybe he's taking a shit. Is basically like what what Elijah says to the prophets of Baal. Um, mm. Yeah, and it, and it is that sense. So, I mean, there, there was a sense that some, you know, in some cultures, there was a, you know, it was perfectly well understood that deities might defecate. Um, it's it's not something that we ever find described directly to Yahweh, but that kind of taunt that we find in the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal, you know, it shows that the kind of scatology played a big role in theology. And that's exactly what's going on with Ezekiel's language of the gods, the gilulim. It's kind of like trying to smear <laughs> smear them with something, you know, render them dirty and you know, ritually dirty, um, as well as kind of conceptually um base, I think.